do, do. You've got questions, God's got answers in His holy word. More education, revelation than you've ever heard. So take a seat and join us as we bring God's word to light. Welcome to the Church of Christ where the Bible is right. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of The Bible is Right. I'm Dwayne Matthews and I'm one of the members of the Quinn's Evangelism Ministry Team at Quinn's Church of Christ. It's located in the beautiful city of Memphis, Tennessee, where Brother Nokomis Rogers is our minister and Brother Graylin Freeman is our associate minister. As a group of believers, we look to the Bible for primary authority for all religious instruction and it has answers to everything that we seek. In other words, we truly believe that the Bible is right. We're always interested in what the Bible has to say, but more importantly, what it teaches. So as this broadcast continues and each broadcast, we will pose a question to our associate minister, Brother Freeman, who's here with us to help us understand that specific topic. And this week, Brother Freeman, the um, passage comes from the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. And again, the 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. And I'll be reading this from the, new, uh, from the King James Version. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. And in light of that passage, Brother Freeman, um, it's saying, where why are we a member or the of the Church of Christ, rather, and uh, why should one be a member of any church? I tell you, Dwayne, this is truly the quintessential question. Mm -hmm. Why am I a member of the Church of Christ? Okay. And why should a member? Why should one be a member of any church, for that matter? Indeed, we read in the Scripture mm -hmm. this particular passage. 2 Corinthians 13 and verse number 5. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Try it yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. See, God is emphasizing by this passage of Scripture that he doesn't want me to take for granted that I'm saved. Mm -hmm. He wants me to examine my life each and every day. I should examine whether or not I'm in the faith. I'm obeying the faith and doing the things that he would want me to do. He said to the Corinthian saints, uh, wherefore, let him that thinketh he stand take heed lest he fall. That's 1 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 10, verse number 12. Now, friends, to whom is it that we're going to have to give an account one day, that we're going to have to stand before in the day of judgment? Each soul is going to be held accountable to God through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now I know, Brother Matthews, that there are those who don't maintain that there is a, an impending judgment. There are those mm -hmm. who would maintain there is no heaven or hell. There is no real Jesus Christ. I'm going to address that at the end of this question. Okay. Romans chapter 2 and verse number 16. There the Bible declares, in the day when God will judge the secrets of men's hearts by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. The same mm -hmm. principle is advanced in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. The gospel, my friends, is the only standard by which man is going to be judged. Therefore, it behooves man uh, mm -hmm. to do what the gospel teaches in matters regarding the church. Mm -hmm. So this is the basic answer to the question. Why am I a member of the church of Christ? I'm a member of the church of Christ because the church of Christ does what the gospel says, Christ says the church must do. And this is the only reason that a person should be a member of any particular church. Any church that you go to, we must be able to examine ourselves in light of what that church teaches, in light of what the Bible says, mm -hmm. and make the contrast and comparison to thus saith the Lord. Now, what is it then that the church of Christ does uh, different from other churches. What is it that the Church of Christ does that the gospel says the church must do? Well, first and foremost, the Church of Christ honors the name of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, many churches today, they claim to honor Christ, but the name on the door, the name on the outside shows that they're honoring someone else. Paul wrote mm -hmm. in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 through 13, 
that there be no divisions among you. He emphasized by saying that any name that honors anyone other than the person that was crucified for you for your salvation is a name that's not worthy to be following. Yet, how many churches, how many churches, Dwayne, do we see today named after Paul, named mm -hmm. after Peter, named after John, or some other ap apostle or, or great man? Mm -hmm. How many churches today do we see named after some city or some river or some mountain mentioned in the Bible? How many churches do we see today named after some religious rite or some religious practice within the church? Now, is that right? When the apostle clearly, guided by divine inspiration, said otherwise, taught otherwise, here's where the passage comes into play. Okay. Try your own selves. Mm -hmm. Prove your own selves whether you be in the faith. I am a member of the Church of Christ because the Church of Christ honors the name of Christ, the name which is above every name, the name at which every knee shall bow and every tongue will be made to confess. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 9. Second, the church of Christ seeks to make Christ the standard and the authority in all matters of our lives. Now, perhaps you've heard it said before, um, well, that, that's the way we've always done it, mm, or that's yeah. the way my mother did, or that's what my father taught me, or that's what the bishop said, or that's what the pope said, or that's what the reverend advised, and that's what our creed says, or that's what our opinion is, or this is the way we've always uh, practiced this particular thing. When was the last time, my friends, you heard someone say, the Bible says? When was the last time you heard someone say, the scripture teaches? Mm -hmm. When was the last time you heard someone stand up and preach, the New Testament authorizes, or thus saith the Lord? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there's a vast difference between the thinking in these kinds of statements. Mm -hmm. The first set of statements are subjective. They're relative. They are changing. They're mutable and, and not dependent upon eternal salvation. The, the latter statements are permanent. They're unchanging. They're objective. They are eternal, and they're going to go on forever. Now, of which type of statements is the will of Christ concerning the church? Okay. Well, it is clear. It is the second type of statements mm -hmm. because the Bible teaches in Hebrews 13 and verse number eight that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm a member of the Church of Christ because the Church of Christ believes in the one standard, the one faith that the Bible advocates in the book mm -hmm. of Ephesians chapter four, verse number five, Jude, verse number three. Third, the Church of Christ honors the plan that Christ Jesus instituted for the church in regards to salvation. Now, by looking at the process of salvation, my friends, as we derive from the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we see direct teaching by Christ. Mm -hmm. It is undeniable, undeniable conclusion that there are five primary things that a person must do in order to claim salvation in regards to the Lord. First, a person must hear the gospel. They must be taught the gospel of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We learn this requirement in the book of Matthew chapter 28 and verse number 19 and 20. It's the command where Jesus said to teach all nations. Now, here's the inference that is clear, Matt, well, Brother Matthews. Mm -hmm. in, if there's teaching, there must be hearing. You must hear the gospel. Mm -hmm. This in accordance with Mark 16, 15 and 16, Luke 24 and verse 47, John chapter 20, verses 30. And 31. Second, mm -hmm. a person must believe that which they've been taught. They believe that which they've heard, that Jesus is indeed the Christ, the Son of the living God. Here's what the Bible teaches, Mark 16, 15 and 16, John 20, verses 30 and 31. Third, a person must repent of their sins before coming to Christ. Repentance is a change of mind, a change of attitude, a change of disposition. We learn of this requirement from Jesus in Luke chapter 24 and verse 47. Fourth, a person must confess, that is to say, be in agreement with God. What has God said about Jesus? God said that Jesus is his son. A person must confess, that is to say, say the same thing that God has said. So we must confess with our mouth what we believe in our heart, that Jesus is the Christ. We learn this requirement in Matthew chapter 10, 
verses 32 and 33. Mm -hmm. Fifth, a person must be born again, born of the water and of the spirit. That's by being baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. This is the clear teaching of Matthew 28, 19 and 20. The clear teaching of Mark 16, 15 and 16. My friends, this is Christ's plan. This didn't come up and derive from man. Search the scriptures. What did our inquiry ask? Why are we attending any particular church? church? Yeah. Why do we go to the church of Christ mm -hmm. as opposed to any particular church? The scripture teaches. Prove your own selves. Search the scriptures. Try your own selves. Prove whether or not that which you're believing is coming from the Bible. Mm -hmm. When we search the scriptures, we find this clear and simplistic teaching. Now, there's some other wonderful things that we could discuss in respects to this. Uh, I'm a member of the Church of Christ because it was founded on the day and in the place that the scriptures prophesied it would be. In Jerusalem, first day of Pentecost, following the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It was established in Jerusalem just as the scriptures said it was going to happen. I'm a member of the Church of Christ because it's organized the way the Bible says the church is supposed to be organized. Mm -hmm. It worships in the way that the scripture says it must worship. I'm a member of the church of Christ because it teaches about Christ in regards to the day of judgment. It teaches what Christ taught in regard to his death, burial, and resurrection. It teaches what Christ taught in regard to the inspiration of the scriptures. We could go on and on, uh, Brother Matthews, with numerous things that Christ and the apostles taught in regards to man mm -hmm. by making examination of what current churches are preaching today. See, if the church of Christ was not teaching the truth concerning these matters, and we could not be able to open the book and find the place where these things were written, where these things were practiced by the early church, then I would surely upon examination, just as the scripture advises, not be a member therein, because mm -hmm. I would be examining in light of the scripture. The only reason, my friends, to be a member of any church is because mm -hmm. that church will teach and practice what the Bible teaches and mm -hmm. what the Bible practices. Try yourselves. Prove your own selves whether or not you be in the faith. Now, if we teach what Christ and the apostles taught, if we teach and preach what Christ and the apostles taught, then we will get the same things that they got. We will get the same things that they got. Why is that, Brother Matthews? Because seed planted will reproduce after its kind. Mm -hmm. Seed That's planted right. will produce after its own kind. An apple seed cannot produce a peach tree. A wheat seed cannot produce a pecan tree. A grape seed cannot produce a watermelon. The seed, my friends, is the word of God. Uh, Luke chapter 8, verse number 11. The seed is the word of God. If we plant the seed, what, we can't help but get the same thing that they got. When they planted that seed of the word of God, what is it that they got? Why, why should we expect to get anything different? We would get the same thing. They planted the seed. Here's what they got. They got Christians and Christians only. Not a prefix Christian, not a suffix Christian, just Christian. Acts chapter 11, verse number 26. They planted the seed of the word of God. You know what they got? They got the one church. They got the one faith. They got the one Lord. They got the one baptism. They got the one father. They got the one spirit. They got the one hope. This is in Ephesians 4, verses 4 through 6. When the church teaches and preaches what Christ and the apostles taught and practiced, then that church will get the same thing they got. They will get the Lord's church. Okay. They will get Christ's church. They will get the church of Christ. And that is why I'm a member of the church of Christ. Mm -hmm. Individuals will respond, Brother Matthews, by saying, okay, Brother Freeman, just suppose, just suppose that the Bible is not the inerrant word of God. Suppose that the Bible is not accurate. It is not the authority of God. Mm. Suppose that there is no person truly named Jesus Christ. Suppose 
that the scripture is not the authority. Suppose there is no judgment. There is no heaven. There is no hell. The, 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 the things that the Bible advocates in regards to living a particular way and, mm -hmm. and giving of your means and attending services and praying and doing good for your fellow man and all of these things uh, that we attribute to morality and Christianity, they don't exist. Mm -hmm. Because when we die, there is no judgment. There is no accounting. There is none of those things. We simply live through this world and we die. And when we die, we go into absolute oblivion. There is no accounting whatsoever. Suppose that is the case. All right. Let's let's extrapolate that to its inescapable conclusion. Suppose an individual who believes this is absolutely right, that there is no judgment. The Bible is not the authority of God. That when we die, we simply die and go into oblivion. We cease to exist whatsoever. There is no accounting. There is no judgment. There is no heaven. There is no hell. Mm. All right. What have I lost by practicing these principles in God's book? What have I lost by loving my fellow man? What have I lost by praying? What have I lost by giving up my means? What have I lost by attending the services of the church of Christ? What have I lost by doing right by my fellow man, by, by striving to treat others with respect and dignity and grace? What have I lost by doing these things if there's no judgment, if there's no heaven, there's no hell? My friends, I have lost nothing because there is nothing. But on the other hand, let us suppose that there is a judgment. Exactly. By your same argument, by that same argument, let's suppose there is a judgment. There is a Jesus Christ. There is one church that the Bible talks about. The, the, that the Bible is actually right. That the scripture is the authority. That when I leave this world, I'm going to stand before Christ and the Bible is going to be open and my life is going to be measured by the standards of this book. Mm -hmm. Suppose the Bible is right and I do stand before God in that great and final day. Then by that same reasoning, what have you lost? Mm -hmm. What have you lost? You've lost everything. Everything is lost by that same standard of your own understanding. No, my friends, the Bible is right. The scripture is the authority of God. I'm a member of the church of Christ and I remain a member of the church of Christ because I can find the things that it practices in thus saith the Lord. Visit with us here at the church of Christ. It would be our great honor to sit down and talk with you further about the things contained in this precious book divine. Meet with our minister, Brother Rogers or myself. Indeed, you would honor us with an occasion to discuss with you in greater detail what the scheme of redemption is, the plan of salvation, the accuracy and the authority of the Bible and how it is indeed applicable to our lives. As in all things, Brother Matthews, mm. let's keep the faith. Till the last, amen. Well, once again, you've, you've laid it out there for us and it is crystal clear what we should do in that regard. Thank you, and brother. we can continue to thank you for your studies on this. Well, we've come to the conclusion of another episode of The Bible is Right. Stay tuned on Monday mornings at 9 a.m. for not only this episode, but other episodes of The Bible is Right. Also, check out our YouTube and our Facebook pages, as well as our uh, website, which is quinschurchofchrist.com. All of the information for our social media will be listed on the screen below. Also, on Wednesday evenings at 5.30, our own minister, Brother Rogers, has this inspirational message that he gives us. And also on Sunday mornings at 10.15 a.m. Central Standard Time, he's here preaching the gospel, and those sermons are live streamed and they're also recorded that you can view them later at your convenience. We urge you to share all of these videos and information with your family and friends so they can come into a better understanding of the word. We continue to thank you for your support and we will see you next time at Quince Church of Christ. Do, 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 do. You've got questions, God's got answers. In his holy word, more education, revelation than you've ever heard. So take a seat and join us as we bring God's word to light. Welcome to the Church of Christ where the Bible is right.